What future city projects are you excited about? You know, that's a great question. And to me, any city project that is a community partnership project always excites me. You know, in where we're not the ones in the lead, we're the ones helping. Uh, I don't think that the city of Arc City needs to be responsible uh, for at least starting or initiating every project. I think it's good to have the public have a say in what we do and, and help direct our future. I think it, when we have a uh, project that comes before us that is citizen driven, uh, I've had several that have been brought to my attention. One is a Frisbee golf. And what I told the Frisbee golf group was, you know, you work with your individuals and, and you come up with a plan of how you want to um, fund it or what type of funding you're requesting, you know, where you're wanting to place this uh, type of facility and we will do everything in our power to make sure that we can get it taken care of. Uh, those are the type of projects I love. You know, we've had a lot of interest in a dog park, but a dog park is something that we have to have community buy-in. You know, we have to know that people are going to um, take care of it, you know, that we have the citizens um, of Arc City, you know, our, our partners in, in these projects to make sure that it's a successful project. That's why we uh, try to have uh, steering committees for larger um, community-wide projects. One of the ones that we're currently looking at is Wilson Park. Wilson Park is a project uh, that we funded a, we received funding from the V.J. Wilkins Trust to do a master plan of Wilson Park in the old hospital area. Uh, that master plan is complete, however, its, it's dissemination in the public has, has been held off due to the um, troubles and the financial woes of the hospital. Uh, we've, our focus primarily is trying to get them on, they're, they're feeding on firm ground. And so, uh, with them looking like they're doing better every day, uh, it may be time to roll that back out. And that would be um, a project that would have to be a community-wide uh, project. It would have to be something that citizens um, contribute to and, and to help fund it. Uh, it's something that's for the benefit of the entire community. Uh, with the V.J. Wilkins Trust grant that we received, you know, we have a good vision. And that vision was developed by key stakeholders, you know, built by uh, downtown business owners. It was. Uh, done by Chamber of Commerce uh, uh, um, um, Chamber of Commerce representatives. It was done, I believe, by a library board member. I think there was also several at-large citizens that had a, a, an interest in Wilson Park. They were also on that steering committee. As a process, I was completely driven by the committee um, with the help of an, an architect out of Wichita, who's very familiar with Arc City. And so I think that there was in product, uh, we're hoping to roll that out in March um, sometime. And hopefully by that time we have some commitments from uh, some key partners in order to make this project more a reality. But like I said, it, it's one of those that's going to take everyone's effort. It's going to not be purely a city driven project. It's not going to be uh, one that um, uh, can be accomplished by ourselves. It's just not. We're going to have to work together in order for it to become a reality. Some other projects that excite me are ones that really take care of our uh, infrastructure, our core functions as a city government. You know, the three major ones are road, water, and sewer. And stormwater is also in that, included in that list. But we have to be able to take care of those items that you can't see that really are the base for um, the city of Arc City and what we do as a city. Um, we have to do those well. It's something that it, it takes time. It takes a lot of money and it takes a lot of time to get these improvements done. And they're not easy. When you have a hundred year old water lines uh, in the ground, what that means is for a hundred years they weren't replaced. That means it was not a priority for that long. And to make them a priority all of a sudden is very difficult because you have miles upon miles of water line that need replaced and sewer line and storm water. And it is not cheap. You know, the cost today is only rising. You know, we've seen prices rise 10, 15% in the last five years for some of these materials, if not greater in some areas. 
And so it's not going to get cheaper as, as time goes on. All we can do is try to hit those very uh, problem spots, uh, try to save money in other areas by, by looking at projects and trying to use our, um, your tax dollars in the best way that we can uh, to provide the most benefit. And unfortunately, what, when that's done, some of these smaller projects kind of get put on the wayside, and, and which is not fair to some people, but we have to look at the number of individuals that it affects. You know, we're going to do some street before we're going to do a side street. You know, we're going to do radio lane with, and maintain radio lane before we do um, your, um, your single uh, width road. I mean, it's, it's an unfortunate that we have to do that, but we only have a, uh, so much funding and we have to make sure we prioritize that properly. What is going on with the old hospital property? I think I answered that a little bit. Um, it is being planned and there is a master plan out there. The master plan um, is really looking at a long-term plan. It's not looking at something that's going to be done in two years, three years. We're, we're talking about uh, making sure that if we do something in that park that there is um, some thought process behind it. You just don't want to go in there and start putting a whole bunch of different little things in there and, and just have to move them or change them up because it doesn't make sense with this other item you're wanting to do in there. You know, some things we've talked about is a splash pad, a spray park. Some things we've talked about is uh, new restrooms, new playground system, upgrading the uh, rotunda to make it more uh, usable during the entire year, looking at an enhanced farm and art market in that area, looking at parking. Uh, looking at trails through there uh, so individuals can walk through the area uh, with ease and when you meet a bicyclist or someone on a skateboard you don't have to jump off the sidewalk when they're going by or that they don't have to ride the grass as they're riding by you. Make it a little bit safer for people but put some planning behind it and make it where it is basically the core area for Arc City. You know that is downtown is the heart of Arc City and Wilson Park is immediately um, is, it's just a long arm of downtown. It is our city center park. It really is. It's where everyone goes. It's where we have the most events. It's where we have uh, the most investment is in a park um, of all of our parks. And Rotunda is a huge focal point, uh, focal point for the community. Um, you know, it's, it's referred to as the train park. My kids will never know it as Wilson Park probably. They only know it as the train park. And I think to uh, many generations, and hopefully for generations to come, we can keep that train open. But it's going to take some improvements. It's going to take a little bit of looking at safety. Um, it's going to have to look, be looking at the long-term plan for that area. And uh, with the hospital being um, demolished and that site being cleaned up, it's a great opportunity to look at the entire park as a whole. Um, making it housing would be easy, but once it's housing, your opportunities for anything else are gone. And so that's kind of why we've kind of focused it on looking at enhancing the park rather than adding it just as a new area for, for housing. So to be clear, it's going to be part of the park? It will be part of the park. Part of it may be housing, but the majority of that area will be park area um, for as, as, as far as we can see in the future. How can citizens help to create a more positive and product productive city environment? It starts with City Hall. Uh, it starts with city staff. You know, we need to have a partnership type mentality. We need to be ones that are looking at citizens as citizens and not as customers. We have to ensure that whatever we do is looking at it at the big picture. We have to be reminded that these are our neighbors, that these are um, the individuals we go to church with, that our kids go to school with. Um, we have to treat them as such. You know, we have to treat them like they're um, our children, you know, and our grandparents. You know, everyone's important in our city. And uh, for us, we have to ensure that everyone in the organization treats them as such. However, there comes times where, unfortunately, you know, um, the city can only do so much, and that's when the community has to get involved. I think that in order for us to be more positive community, we have to start looking at ourselves as being a partnership. We really do. Um, we have to work together better. 
it can't be solely driven by the city. It has to be a community partnership. Uh, I look back at, um, and a lot of individuals um, have told me this, and, and I wasn't born, but I do remember, um, in speaking with all folks, in the 40s and 50s and 60s, there's a lot of civic groups and civic organizations. You had Odd Fellows, Masons, JCs, um, very active Chamber of Commerce. You had Junior junior JCs, I believe, uh, Optimus, Sir Optimus, PEO. You had all these civic groups where individuals would basically um, come together and think about the future of, of the community. Unfortunately for us, um, a lot of these organizations are losing membership. You know, they're not, um, they don't have the levels of funding and commitment and that they've had in the past. And because it's a different society today, you know, we, uh, people don't look at them as being community oriented. And I think that that has caused us to lose some of the positivity in the community. There was a Pew study done in 2010 uh, that basically said that it stated that 50% of the people in the United States didn't even know who their neighbors were. And that is saying something big. You know, if you don't know who your neighbors are, how can you effectively change your community, your neighborhood, um, and, and make it a better place for everyone? And I think we have to start in the neighborhoods. You know, we need to, need to start enhancing little pockets and little areas of our city and making them bigger. And by enhancing neighborhoods, I mean block, block parties that we have for National Night Out. Those are a perfect example. We have a lot of individuals that come together during those block parties once a year and they have a little barbecue. Uh, maybe these neighborhoods, uh, they get together, maybe they go over to their neighbor's house and help them paint. You know, maybe they have a disabled or elderly neighbor who just cannot physically get out and take care of their property anymore. Maybe they go over there and offer to help. Maybe a youth group from a local uh, a neighborhood church goes out and picks up branches or mows the individual's yard. Uh, I remember growing up, uh, we would basically mow the whole neighborhood. You know, if someone's grass was tall, we'd go and mow it, you know, never expecting compensation back. Am I saying that works in all cases? It doesn't. Um, but I think that we've lost a lot of that in the last 20, 30 years. And I think that we need to do a better job of getting back to that sort of mentality. And that the that only way that's going to come about is through civic groups, through civic engagement, through working with um, others and working with your neighbors. And so that's, I think, how we can create a more positive um, environment. I think that's how we can create a more positive Arc City. And it, it's going to take time. You know, I, I refer to it as trying to turn around an aircraft carrier. You know, you're not going to turn an aircraft carrier around on a dime. It's going to take some time. But I think we can get there. And, you know, I'm very positive and I'm very um, optimistic that, that uh, change is going to come. It's going to take time, but I think it's going to come. And, and hopefully individuals are seated in, in Arc City. Um, and if they're not, I need to know. You know, I need to know where we're having shortcomings, and I know I need to know where we need to make improvements. Um, but uh, thank you for that question. And if you have any thoughts or ideas, let me know. You know, uh, the only dumb idea is the one that doesn't get asked. You know, the only dumb question and dumb idea that I have is the ones that I don't know about. So let me know what you're thinking, and um, I'll see what we can do and see how we can par partner to make Arc City better. Thanks.